Welcome eager viewers to part 12 of my particle videos. This is a quick one to demonstrate another new 801 feature that may well have flown in under your radar. Here we are back in old Modo 701. Here I've created a simple scene with a hollow cylinder and a ring shaped surface emitter and connected them all up in the schematic. So the ring emitter feeds into the surface emitter and the surface emitter is obviously connected to the particle simulation. Because this is a dynamic simulation, we need to bridge the particle simulation to the dynamic solver. And we also need to connect the tube up to the solver to tell the solver that we have some dynamic objects in this scene. Normally, this connection is made for you automatically when you make the geometry into a dynamic object. So far, so not terribly exciting. Let's see what happens if we run the simulation. OK, so the ring is emitting particles and they fall through the tube, as you would expect. Nothing really to write home about there. What I'm going to do now is add a deformer to change the shape of this tube. So let's add to the tube a magnet deformer and it converts our tube into a sort of hourglass shape. OK, so what happens if we run the simulation now? Ah, well that didn't go as one might expect. I'm afraid this is just the way it is in Modo 701 because the particle system isn't aware of the deformation of surfaces. It reacts to the mesh it saw when it was first run. In a simple case like this, of course, we can freeze the mesh and then use the frozen mesh instead of the deformed mesh. So I'll just show you how to do that. You go into geometry, well, select the geometry first, go into geometry and freeze it. OK, and now we have frozen geometry, which should be respected by the particles. Well, what's wrong with that, I hear you cry. The trouble is there are a number of things that you can no longer do. We've lost the ability to modify the deformation later in our development cycle, and we cannot easily animate this deformation over time. Depending on what you want to use this for, these could be showstoppers. Just for interest's sake, I'll show you what happened when we connected up the magnet deformer. It's connected to the tube, so let's see what's being created. We have the magnet influence, and controlling that is the effector. So the effector is the thing that actually controls the deformation. You'll notice now that I've frozen the deformation that the influence has been disabled. If I were to re-enable that, we'd get the magnet effector applied to the now frozen mesh, so we'd get a double deformation. I don't think many particles are going to get through there. So, what does 801 bring to the table? Let's look at the same model in 801 and do the same experiment. You can see we've got the particles passing through the tube as before. Let's add the magnet and run again. Ah, OK. On the face of it, we're no better off. The particle system is still ignoring that deformation. But in 801, there's an option in the dynamic properties of the mesh. Let's have a look at those. There's the tube, dynamic properties, and there's this checkbox, deforming. Really, this is what this video is all about, this one checkbox. If we check this, then Modo will take notice of the deformation. Brilliant. It's a little bit more subtle than that, because if we turn off this deforming checkbox, what do you think will happen? 
uh, it's still taking notice of the deformation. However, if I disable the magnet effector and run the simulation again, it still thinks that it's deformed. So the way that the particle system works is it essentially freezes the deformation at the start of the run and it will only update it if we check this deforming option. And now it's behaving correctly again. So it can be a little bit confusing, but so long as you have this option checked, then the deformations will be respected by the particle system. And it's also possible to animate the deformations. I'll just quickly do that. Let's look at the magnet effector. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the range of the magnet effector so that we can change the influence of the, the magnet. So we'll start at one meter, create a key, um, and go to 36, create another key. Um, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, does it? Let's go to 132 and bring it down to 500. I'll leave it at that value for a few frames and then at 240 we'll go, go back to 1 meter again just to prove that I'm not lying. And Let's see what happens. OK, so it's more or less working. Um, we can see a little bit of jiggling about as the deformation kicks in with these particles sort of dancing around on the surface. And this happens when the surface is moving one direction and the particle is moving in the opposite direction and they sort of pass over one another without noticing that they're there. Um, one way to address that is to change the margin in the dynamic properties of the geometry. So if we have to wang this up to 80 millimeters, say, that will probably address that problem. Let's see how well that does. Just gives it a little bit more of a of a warning. Well, it's a bit better. It's not perfect. Maybe give it a bit more. Dum de dum de dum de dum de dum. Dum de dum de dum de dum de dum. There it seems to be behaving itself now. Excellent. Right, there are one or two things that it's worth bringing to your attention. Let's go back to the dynamic properties of the the tube. Now this option here, this deforming option, it only shows up if the collision shape is set to mesh. So if I change this to one of the other options like hull, then we don't see the option anymore. So it only shows up in mesh collision shape. That makes sense because the deformers are deforming a mesh and uh, doing a collision with a hull isn't really going to be affected very much by a deformation, or at least the results are not going to be useful. The other thing to be aware of is that obviously when calculating the deformed mesh and feeding it into the dynamic system, Modo is going to have to do a lot more work. So by default, this deforming 
option is switched off and that's really just to give you the best performance in the majority of cases. But if you're aware that you, you need to respect the deforming surface then you can turn it on um, and you'll suffer some performance penalty but you'll get the right result. So that's it for deformed collisions. I thought I'd round off this tutorial with a quick tip. Several people have asked me why their particles are not showing up. So do you have problems with disappearing particles? Here's an example. I run my simulation and it's clearly running. My tube is pulsing but where are the particles? They're nowhere to be seen. I can hear my CPU fan whirring so the computer's clearly doing something. The fix might be something as simple as selecting the options in your 3D view. So O on the keyboard and check show locators. And now when we run our particles are magically back. So particles are controlled by locator visibility in the viewport and if you don't see any particles that could be your problem. Well that's it for this episode. I hope it was helpful and uh, hope to see you again soon.